Hello, everybody, and welcome back. So now that you have been presented the most recent ESO guidelines, I wanted to give you a brief introduction into Magic App. Magic App enables you to conveniently access all of the ESO guidelines and get straight to the recommendations with just a few mouse clicks. All you need is a working internet connection. Magic stands for making great the irresistible choice. We're very excited about this system, which is meanwhile used by many guideline organizations. What Magic App does, it allows guideline organizations to efficiently create, update, and publish their guidelines. All guideline content is entered into a database in a digitally structured format. This allows immediate publication in multi-layered formats on all devices, including mobile phones, both offline and online. You can also integrate the recommendations in electronic medical records as decision support systems linked to patient data. Magic App further allows us to adapt guidelines to the specific context of a country like Germany, Norway, or Hungary. The important entities, and this is important to understand, are the individual recommendations, not the entire guideline. You further have decision tools these decision ads are meant to facilitate the discussion between you and your patients. Again, the information is highly structured, it's tagged, and can be dynamically updated. This means that we can update guidelines as new evidence emerges that could change practice. Magic App allows the guideline working group to directly work in the system, which once more is based on the grade system. The panel simply logs into the system and formulates the PICO questions, defining the population, the intervention, the comparator, the patient important outcomes, and so on. They then search for relevant information and outcomes, etc. They make the grade recommendation, make the grade evidence profiles by plotting study details, effect estimates, rating the quality of evidence, and so on. And then they convene to discuss the evidence. They then move from evidence to recommendations and eventually formulate the recommendations typically for or against, strong or weak, typically in a format like we recommend, we suggest, they formulate the rationale and include practical information if needed. There are multiple routes for you to access the guidelines. You can go to the um, ESO guideline directory on the ESO website, which will inform you on the latest developments, including latest ESO guidelines. And by scrolling down in this window, you will also get an overview on guideline categories. By clicking your way through the menu, you get to individual guidelines as is shown here, which then take you directly to the published article in the European Stroke Journal. Just to mention, all ESO guidelines are published in the European Stroke Journal, and this remains the primary reference for citations. Now, alternatively to downloading the paper from the European Stroke Journal, you can also log in directly to Magic App and access the guidelines from there, which is actually what I would recommend if all you want to do is quickly look at the recommendations, as this is, you will find out quickly, the easiest and most convenient way to access the guideline information. So again, up here is the link, and this is how the guidelines appear. Thanks to Lucia Balmer, our guideline manager, who migrated all our existing, so the previous guidelines, to the new system with support from Magic App, the Magic App team, and also the Young Stroke Physicians and Researcher Committee. Now, if you click on one of these links, such as the expedited recommendations, a recommendation for the use of short-term dual antiplatelet therapy early after minor stroke and high-risk TLA, you will be taken to a window that looks like this, and it always looks like this when you go through this step. By clicking on one of these items, these icons, you will receive information on authors, on the abstract, on the introduction. Typically, this is not what you are primarily interested in, methods and background information, summary of current evidence, and of course, the results. And by default, the window on the recommendations is open, as this is what most people are interested in in the first place. All recommendations are structured in the very same way. This means you have an actionable recommendation text with a label for the strength. And this is down here. I'll show, I'll get back to this in a minute. 
You can read more about what a strong recommendation or a weak recommendation means. So there's a lot of guidance in Magic App. So for instance, for dual antiplatelet therapy with aspirin and clopidogrel versus aspirin monotherapy, there's a strong recommendation that in people with a non-cardiombolic minor ischemic stroke, meaning an NIHSS score of three or less, or high-risk TIA, meaning an ABCD2 score of four or more in the past 24 hours, we recommend 21 days of dual antiplatelet therapy with aspirin and clopidogrel, followed by antiplatelet monotherapy thereafter. And you can see that the quality of evidence is high, rated as high. So with Magic App, you are immediately there while having access to all relevant information. It's very intuitive. Now, by clicking on the menu below, so you will be taken to uh, the interactive summary findings table and evidence profile, which is shown here, such as the risk of ischemic stroke, you'll be informed on the relative risks, the absolute effect estimates, which is typically what you're interested in most, the certainty of evidence, and also a plain text summary. And then by clicking on this item here, this icon here, you can further obtain information underpinning this summary, and that would again also guide you in discussions with patients. You can further go to the decision ads by clicking on this menu item down here, which will then take you to um, a figure that looks like this and where information is presented in a format that we know patients understand. So you can have a discussion with a patient that will allow them to make well-informed decisions. And then, of course, you still have all the other information, including references and also relevant text, tables, figures, including forest plots, as shown here. And all this information is easily accessible, so I encourage you to just give it a try and navigate through the system. The most important point, however, is that the new ASO guidelines are all generated using the GRADE system. And this is very easy. It's very easy to get straight to the point, straight to the recommendations, as is shown here, for instance, for the guideline on blood pressure management in acute ischemic stroke and ICH that was just presented. And with this, I would like to close, not without thanking all the people who have helped in setting this up in record time, in particular, Lucia Balmer, our guideline manager, Guillaume Turk and Simona Sacco, chairs of the guideline board, after Lal and Martin Taylor Rohn, our two methodologists, Sabrina Mutter, the guideline coordinator, Maria Luisa Sede and John Marti Fabregas, who are on the guideline publication subcommittee, the Young Stroke Physicians and Researcher Committee, the guideline working groups, workshop committee, publication committee, and Per Olaf Vanvik and the Magic App team. And thank you very much for your attention.